Thank you for tuning in to see Shake the Nations. We are glad that you're here. Please take a moment to send us a comment and to share the link to this broadcast with your friends and family in social media. We believe in the power of prayer. Send us your prayer requests by clicking the link in the comments area of the broadcast. Thank you for supporting our ministry. Giving is now easier than ever with these options. You can use e-giving by touching the link that is in the comments section of the broadcast, or you can also use e-giving on your cell phone by following the instructions for texting listed here. If you would like to mail your donations, please send them to the Love Center at P.O. Box 310-660, Atlanta, Georgia 31131. We're in this together. Please submit your prayer request using the link that will be provided in the comments area of this broadcast. Start your day with two early in the morning, Monday through Saturday at 8.15 a.m. on Facebook Live. Study God's Word with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live or watch the rebroadcast on YouTube or Instagram TV. On Wednesday, August 19th at 11 a.m., Love Center Atlanta will host a back-to-school backpack giveaway while supplies last. Please come and get your essentials to start your children off to a wonderful school year.
Please join us as we recite the Love Center vision, mission, and intentional strategy. Our vision statement, crossing all the lines to reach all the people with the healing gospel of Jesus Christ. Mission statement, we are a Christian church. Jesus Christ has issued to us a mandate for ministry to all people, especially the poor and lost. Our church seeks to identify and design a healing ministry to meet the needs of the total man, mind, body, and spirit, thereby making active disciples. Intentional Strategy A commitment to the Word of God as the source of truth. A commitment to prayer. A commitment to praise and worship. A commitment to fellowship. A commitment to evangelism based upon Acts 2, 42 through 47. We believe in the power of prayer. Send us your prayer requests by clicking the link in the comments area of the broadcast. Study God's Word with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live or watch the rebroadcast on YouTube or Instagram TV. Thank you for supporting our ministry. Giving is now easier than ever with these options. You can use e-giving by touching the link that is in the comments section of the broadcast or you can also use e-giving on your cell phone by following the instructions for texting listed here. If you would like to mail your donations, please send them to the Love Center at P.O. Box 310-660, Atlanta, Georgia 31131. Shake the Nations with Pastor Byron L. Broussard will be airing on 1380 AM WAOK. On Wednesday, August 19th, at 11 a.m., Love Center Atlanta will host a back-to-school backpack giveaway while supplies last. Please come and get your essentials to start your children off to a wonderful school year. In a history-making move, General Charles C.Q. Brown Jr. has officially been confirmed by the Senate as the next Chief of Staff of the Air Force. The Senate unanimously confirmed General Brown with a vote of 98 to 0, making him the first African American to serve as a military service chief. I am committed to the Air Force achieving irreversible momentum towards implementation of the National Defense Strategy in an integrated and more lethal joint force. Brown is a dedicated command pilot with more than 2,900 flight hours, including 130 hours of combat flight. He currently serves as the U.S. Pacific Air Force's commander and the component commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. He'll be sworn in as Chief of Staff in August. The preaching of the gospel brings the heart and mind of God to the people who need to know and understand His will. God takes the yielded vessels and uses them to point us to paths of hope and change for the better. In times like these, we need to hear a voice that will speak truth to power and love to the lost. Let's be blessed together right now with Pastor Byron L. Broussard. 
Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. I really believe that. So I'm glad you joined us. We're back. It's Sunday morning. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, in the sanctuary of Love Center Atlanta, and the crew is ready to bring God's word to you. Pray with us right now, please. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the blessing of a new day. We thank you, Father, that you have allowed us. You've been kind to us, and you continue to provide for us in this day. Now, God, would you dip us down into your grace and your anointing. Saturate us, make us full, and allow us to pour out and become empty before the people, blessing them with what you have put inside. We thank you. We expect you to do a great thing, even now. We call on your name, Jesus, with expectation and joy. And all of us say together, amen, amen, amen. Thank God for the blessing of another chance and opportunity to serve and to share. And I just want, if you will, for you to include some other people, if you don't mind, share uh, what we're doing with them right now. Just make sure that they're included in what God's about to say. I really think God's shared with me a word to help and to bless. I have a personal interest in a revolution of sorts within the hearts of people. Not a revolution wherein one group uh, topples the other and battles and bloodies and steals and robs and pillages because all that does is create and set up the template for the same thing to happen with a different group. What I'm talking about is real change. And uh, in the middle of the time that we're in now, many people talk about real change, but it's a little more complicated than just talk. And so the first five verses in the Gospel of Mark give us a little help with this revolution of sorts in the life of one person. Did you know that a revolution starts in the life of one person? who God speaks to, puts it on their heart and mind. But sometimes the revolution actually begins with a change of a life circumstance. So I found this man, and it's an unlikely character. You know, I like to dig those out of the scripture and present them in messages. I found this man who was crippled, and I found Jesus on the move. Don't you love that about our Lord? He's on the move. I found him. I caught him. He was in the beginning of the gospel of Mark. And he was uh, in uh, the end of chapter one, about to go into chapter two. He's preaching in Galilee. And uh, at the end of chapter one, look at what the text says. And I'm going to read this part of the text uh, in the, in the uh, King James Version, then we'll move to the NIV in a little bit. But look at this, look at this. He says, and there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling uh, down to him and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will. Be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away. What did Jesus say to him? Look at this. He said, see thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show yourself to the priest and offer for cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. But in verse 45, the cat gets out of the bag and tells the truth about what happened. That man got healed, and he was a leper, an outcast, the dregs of society. People had been dogging him out and talking about him for a long time. And you mean to tell me God gave him a great big fresh Cadillac healing, Mercedes Benz healing, Rolls Royce healing, and he told, and told him, now shh, don't tell nobody. What did that man do? Look at verse 45. He went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, mm. but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Just for a little while, pray with me. 
I want to share this message and preach along the lines of the thought, the sickness they can't see. Jesus heals the sickness that could not be seen. It's amazing. Let's look at this. In the text, uh, in the second chapter, here it is. And again, he entered in Capernaum after some days. And I think I want to read this out of the NIV. A few days later, when Jesus entered to Capernaum, the people heard that he'd come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left. Praise the Lord. Um, and um, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered that man that was lying on a mat. Then when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, that's a critical line. That's important. Son, your sins are forgiven. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, stop, pause, pause, stop. Didn't you just say the man was paralyzed? And there you go. That's why that's what I don't like about preachers. The man paralyzed. Everybody can see the man paralyzed. Can't walk, can't move. The people got to carry him in on a stretcher. And here you're talking about some sin. Ain't nobody talking about no sin. Always trying to dig up folk past. Always trying, you're judging. All you, I hate about your church people, you Christians. You just judge, judge, judge. Hey, 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 shut up. Jesus said, I see something they don't see. As a matter of fact, I don't want to half heal him. I want to heal him all the way. If I just healed his gnarled up fingers that have been dealt with by palsy, I'll only heal him part of the way. If I just heal his crippled legs that have been debilitated and rendered useless by his disease, I won't heal everything that's wrong with him. I'll only heal pieces and parts of him. Don't you know there are many of us walking this earth looking good, standing strong, fit and trim and smart and educated, bank account, fat, doing well, even in the pandemic. But on the inside are damaged and wounded, almost beyond repair. Hallelujah. At the edge of things about to give up, we need a revolution wherein we get things that are sick that people cannot see healed by the Lamb, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, be quiet, world. Let me do what I do and set things in motion. I want to heal something you can't see. I want to heal what the people can't see. How many of us are hindered and need healing because of a disease, a discomfort, problem, an issue. Nobody even knows we have. Look at this. Look at this. I, I feel somebody about to get delivered right now because when you think about it, the amount of energy that we expend hiding what's wrong with us is enormous. You're tired when you show up from trying to cover up what's wrong with you. For you, you broke when you show up for purchasing coverings for the issues you don't want exposed. Look at the text. Look at the text. Oh, I feel God in here now. And again, he came to Capernaum. After some days, they told he was in the house. Jesus is trying to get some rest in Capernaum because now after this man, this leper that he healed and told everybody he's a healer, everybody wants what? Healing. And so he tries to get to Capernaum so he can chill out for a couple of days. No, no, no can do. They hear that he's in town. Somebody told it. Somebody told it. Somebody told it. You know that's true. Somebody told it. Somebody, if, if you get blessed and you tell, that's why he said, don't tell nobody. But what happened? He told somebody and get what happened. they told somebody else. And then after a while, everybody knew it. He couldn't even go out because he was the real deal. He had the power that was needed and necessary. And so he gets to the house 
and the crowd is around the house. There's a crowd, the house is packed on the inside. No social distancing, physical distancing, or any other kind of distancing whatsoever. They jammed in that crib, jammed in that little house. Jammed. They didn't care that the house wasn't gated in the gated community. They didn't care that the house was in the hood. They didn't care where the house was because there was healing in the house. Somebody holler healing in the house. When there's healing in the house, I don't care if there's paint chips on the door. If there's healing in the house, I don't care if the roof leaks. I don't care if there's no alarm system on the door. I don't care if it needs extra security. When there's healing in the house and I'm sick, I want the healing even if it's risky to acquire. Well, here's, here's, here's what I, I found. I made a couple of notes and I want to share. I don't want to forget. I'm getting a little older. I got to make some notes. Notes, make some notes. There's my notes. Here's my notes. Here's my handwriting. Cameraman, get a tight shot. Here's my handwriting. Here's my notes. Here's what the Lord gave me, but I want to share this. Four people brought their friend to Jesus. Four people brought their friend to Jesus. In verse 3, you see where they connect and commit. Look at this. And they came to him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born, born, carried of four men. Four men. Hallelujah. It's hot. It's, it's messed up. It's, it's, he's crippled. He can give them no help. He is what we call dead weight. Do you have somebody you love? Hallelujah. They wrote a song a while back. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Well, philosophically, and theoretically, I understand that song. That's a serious song. But I want to know if anybody's actively involved in caring for a sick loved one. Theoretically, philosophically, theologically, and spiritually, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. She ain't heavy. She's my sister. He ain't, she ain't heavy. She's my wife. He ain't heavy. He's my husband. Theoretically, philosophically, theologically, and spiritually, they ain't heavy. But physically, day to day, they heavy. Financially, day to day, they heavy. Hallelujah. When, when rent is due, they heavy. When they time to eat, they heavy. When the doctor appointment is, is time to go again uh, and another one, they get heavy. Philosophically, theoretically, theologically, hallelujah, spiritually, they ain't heavy. But I'll be John Brown if in the physical world. And in the world, some people call the real world. So they brought their friend to Jesus, not because necessarily they were religious, but they were looking for relief. But even though, don't dog them out too bad, even though they were looking for relief and possibly even a way out, they committed to get him to the best care possible. They heard Jesus is in Capernaum in this little house. They go to the house, and when they get there, wouldn't you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it always like that? You purpose in your soul to do the right thing. You make a sacrifice to get it done. And when you get it done, there's another issue. Hallelujah. Ah, they got to the house and they got there. On the way, they happy. Oh, they talking to their friend. Praise the man. He's, he's just going to be all right. I hear that dude, he healed the other day. He had leprosy, dog. Leprosy, man. Leprosy. That's the word. That's bad as you can get. And he ain't got it no more. I heard, hey, man, he ain't got it no more. He ain't got it no more. So you know, you know he's going to be able to hook you up. I, man, I can see you. You're going to be walking with us, man. You're going to be walking with us. You're going to be walking with us. And then when they get to the house, it's packed. There's a line, like at the Slutty Vegan. Line. Way wrapped around the little house, all up the road, a line. The last thing you want when you're tired is a line. The last thing you want when you're hot and bothered is a line. And there was a line. The Bible said they couldn't get to the house because there was a crowd even around the door. And so when you committed to helping and being a blessing, you can't let a line stop you. Somebody holler back at me, baby. I can't let a line stop me. It's just a line. I came all this way to be a blessing. I'm going to do what I came to do. It's just a line. So they had to go to a plan B. And in verse 4 it says they had to confront the problem. What did they do? Well, 
if you study just a little bit, I don't, don't want to get you, I don't want to get you messed up, be all bored. If you study Jewish history just a little bit, then you can study the architecture and the way houses for common people were built. There was a stairway on the side of the house. They had to be able to access the cistern, the water system, and they also had to be able to access the roof for other things. They, they did stuff. They worked on the roof. The house wasn't that big. And so sometimes, even just to get a break, they had to climb up those stairs and go on the rooftop. Tap somebody and say, you're going to drive me up on the roof. You're going to drive. You're going to make me get out of here. Hallelujah. You get on my nerves so bad, I got to go, where? Where, <laughs> where your mama? She on the roof. And she said, oh, don't come up here. Where your daddy? He on the roof. He said, don't come up. Don't, don't come up here. Don't come. They went up the side of the house on the roof. And the Bible says that not only did they confront the issue, Hallelujah. But, but, but verse 3 says they took a risk to get a reward. And I want for you to understand, beloved, hallelujah, you got to pray about it. you got to get peace from God about it. But God often, I see, has given the go-ahead on what we would consider risky behavior when there's a great reward. When the risk was designed to be a blessing to this man and, and the point of the risk was to deliver him to the healer. Hallelujah. All systems go. Push on somebody and say green light, green light, green light, green light, green light. Get your mind together. Hallelujah. Stop, stop, stop searching for an excuse and a reason to stop, turn around, go back home. And don't, don't say, hey, dude, I got you for as I get you. You know, I got an appointment at 6 o'clock. I ain't going to be able to miss it. Get your mind together. Once you commit to help, help. Help. If you're going to be a helper, help. Put your mindset in a helping mode. Don't be all divided. Don't let your passions be all twisted. I'm going to help a little bit. You can't help a little bit. No more than you can get a little bit pregnant. Let the spirit of helping impregnate you. Fill your whole being and begin to grow inside of you until it is overwhelming and begins to take over your being until you can give God the praise and the glory and say mission accomplished. They went up the steps, got on the roof, Start busting things loose. Can you imagine the house is packed, the little house is crowded, the roof busting, crumbling, crumbling. They see stuff crumbling. What's going on? What, what, what's happening? What's happening? Broom, broom. And then and they see a basket coming through the roof. Holla at me, somebody. I'm excited now. Hallelujah. But some people, they would have been, oh, my God, call the police. Get them, get them, arrest them, stop them, stop them, stop them. And somebody else said, oh, God, look at that. Which one are you? Are you, oh, God, look at that? Or are you stop them, stop them? Just take a minute and think about it. Are you stop them, stop them? Or are you, oh, God, look at you? Stop them, stop them, look at you. Stop them, stop them, look at you. Somebody's got to graduate from stop them, stop them to look at God. Hallelujah. I want to be a part of what God is doing, especially when he does the unexpected, the supernatural. Hallelujah. I want to be there. I want to be in the room where it happens. Hallelujah. I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it from start to finish if I can. Hallelujah. When God is doing a revolution, he starts in one heart. Hallelujah. And then he connects that heart to kindred spirits and kindred minds. They all went up on the roof, four of them in trouble. They're in trouble now. I can hear him now say, one of them, you know, you know, there's always somebody saying, oh, man, I don't think we're going to do this. We're here now, man. We're here now. And when they get on the roof, they're already trespassing. They're breaking the law. Somebody tap somebody, breaking the law. They're trespassing. They're trespassing on private property, climbing them people's stairs. They don't know them people. They don't know them people. Climbing their stairs, getting up on their roof. They're up on the roof and say, well, is it too late now? We all too late. Tap somebody say, it's too late. I'm all the way in now. I'm all the way in. I'm all the way in. Hallelujah. I'm all the way in. It says they confronted the barrier. They took the risk in verse 4. But now in verse 5, they were finished. Because once they busted the roof open and lowered him down, there was no more that they could do. I beg you to serve God till there's no more you can do. There's a satisfying feeling when you've done all you can do. Hallelujah. And you got to wait on Jesus. Lord, I'm waiting on you. Praise the Lord. The old saints used to sing, I'm down here, Lord, and I'm waiting on you. I can't do nothing till you come. 
He's waiting on the Lord to perform what he performs. He looks at the situation. Thank you, Jesus. And this is when, when they are through in verse 5, Jesus takes over. And when he takes over in verse 5, he sees sickness we can't see. It's almost like people walking around and everybody is, is alarmed, of course, as we, we ought be cautious and alarmed about the coronavirus and the reality of it. There are people who are not showing symptoms. The doctors say they are, and there's a term for it, they call it asymptomatic. Hallelujah. Infected, but you don't know it. There's no fever. They're, they're no snot, no boogers. They can't see it. They're, 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 they're not in the bed. They're not tired. They're not humped over. And, and those persons, particularly if they're young and active, you know, some folks are a little older, they don't move around much anyway. They're in their car, they're in their house, and they go to the store, that's it. But the young ones who are going everywhere, shooting in and out, going everywhere, I'm at the club, I'm at my friend's house, we're having a cookout, we're having a party, we're doing this, they call them super spreaders because they're sick and don't know it. That's how sin is. You'll be sick and don't know it. And you'll be spreading the sin, spreading the sickness, spreading the disease, and don't know it. Hallelujah. Because they are asymptomatic. Well, in verse 5, Jesus sees beyond the crippled hands. Jesus sees beyond the gnarled and, and set neck. Jesus sees past the legs that don't work. And he sees inside the man. And it's crazy when he opens his mouth to heal him. He does not say, ah, yeah, in the name of my father, I want your arms to unlock. No, that's not what he says. In the name of my God, I want your feet to straighten out. In, in the name of, of my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want for you to stand up and start running. That's not what he said. He looks at that man. He says, son, he claims him as his own. Crippled and crazy looking, son, I want you to feel the love of God before you experience the power of God. Son, son, my son, your sins are forgiven. Your sin. Sin? Look, when God gets you and blesses you, it is his aim to give you a deeper healing. If he had just healed his hands and just healed his feet, the people would have been talking again, running around, trying to mock at Jesus. Oh, there's a man who can heal your hands. When he opened a blind man's eyes, there's a man that can cure blindness. Yeah. Oh, the agent would have called him. Look, can I sign you to a two-year deal, Jesus? They, they've been trying to market the miracle. But when he started talking about sin, everybody back up. Say, wait a minute now. If he could see sin deep underneath palsy, if you can see sin under cripple, and when you got a choice to call something out, you don't call out cripple, you call out sin. You're different. You're not a regular preacher, and he's not. And so while I land this airplane and stop this little message, thank you all for listening. I, I know it's the second Saturday in August and it's hot, the dog days of summer. I appreciate you even coming to church this morning. I really do. And thank you for bearing with my excitement. But before we quit, I need to tell you this. Let's, we need to get this straight. He wants to heal in a deeper way, the deepest way. Son, your sins are forgiven. Daughter, 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 daughter. You got your, your Gucci symbol on your waist, in your neck, on your pocketbook, and in your car. But you're still sick. Son, son, I see you whip. Your big old vicious dog. You carry him because you're scared. And that big old pistol. You're terrified of what might happen to you because of the dirty deeds you perform. But I want to come close to you, and I want to claim you so you don't have to do dirt like that. Son, I call you son. And I'm going to do something for you. They, 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 they won't 
because they can't. Your sins are forgiven. Now, now, let me show you something. When God blesses a sinner, the Pharisees are going to jump up. And in this text, they jumped up and said, who is this who blasphemes? He can't forgive sin. Didn't even take time to be overjoyed. Didn't even take time to be happy for the man who was all gnarled up. You know they had heard about the leper, and so all it did was frighten them that they had been upset, upstaged, and the religious body politic had been exposed for being without power. Jesus released the power, and in our lives, I believe in the middle of the pandemic, Jesus is releasing power. Would you take it, receive it? You know what's wrong. You might not have a name for it, but you feel it every day. You carry it with you all day long. You take it to bed with you. You spend money trying to hide it. You're sad and angry and depressed because of it. Somebody wants to be delivered free, and, but when God frees you, you got to be part of the revolution because there are others like you. There are others who are asymptomatic, sick and don't know it. There are others who are walking around here super spread. And so you got to be part of the revolution to shut that all down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you. I command what is holding you back to let you go so that Jesus can heal what the people can't see in you. The doors of the church are open. Would you come? Would you say yes? They brought you all the way to the little house. They busted up the roof and let you down. Don't get scared and roll off the mat, lay there, and let the Lord heal what the people can't see. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for hundreds and then thousands of people stuck in fear. When Jesus saw the faith of those four friends who brought this man, he moved into action because he was moved with compassion. It's the same Jesus. Thank you for him. Thank you for him in 2020, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Ghost of the living God, please move fast and touch hearts. Go deep, God, places we can't even reach. Shake loose the fear. Drive it away with perfect love. We're grateful now. We thank you for it now. We thank you for the victory now, even before things begin to show up. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come now. Come. Come. He's been waiting for you a long time. And he knows exactly what's going on with you. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. I, it just blesses me so I know people are saved, getting saved, giving their lives to the Lord. What I need you to do now, I need you to check in. I need you to talk to us. I need you to ask questions. Don't be saying there's no dumb question unless you don't ask it. Please, please, use, use your keys and let's address the issue. Saints, praise the Lord for today. Ain't it beautiful? I feel the presence of God. Amen. Now let's move to the next part of our worship. Let's get our tithe and our offering, and let's bring the Lord's money to him so that he can keep speaking to people, reaching people, people up close and people far away. People who just have a little issue and people who have major issues. They all belong to God. He loves them one and all. I thank you. I speak to you now to be faithful. Thank God for the church, those who are mature, 
and those who don't find a reason to forget, but they find a reason to be faithful. I thank you for what you've been doing since we've been unable to meet together. You are blessing, and God is a wonder. I hope that he's blessing you in your home and in your situation. I hope he's coming through for you to make the point so you realize it's a two-way street. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You bless me, Lord. Now I bless you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. And so if you will, get your device. Type in your tithe and your offering. Speak to God. And if you need to, ask him, Lord, move the fear. I'm scared. I, I'm making a choice between this and that. I, I'm afraid. I'm making a choice. Making a, if you have a choice to make, always choose God. He'll give you a testimony that'll last you the rest of your life. Lift your seed to the Lord, not as a debt I owe. Say it with me. Take your time. Be deliberate about it. Do it on purpose, not as a debt I owe. My tithe, my offering is a seed that I sow. I won't eat my seed anymore. Thank God for you. God bless you. If you're becoming a friend of our ministry, Hallelujah. Amen. If you're getting with us early in the morning, um, too early in the morning, it don't have to be a secret. Bring it all out in the open. Be a blessing. You'll be so happy that you did. You'll get a reward, a harvest so much bigger than the seed you sow. God's been doing that since before all of us were born. And he intends to do it as long as the earth remains. God bless you. May the peace of God be all over your life, in your family. I pray that the problem that you think is so big that it'll just never get fixed or healed, that God puts his hand and heart on that and shows you who he is and how much he cares about you. Who are we that God would care about our little situations? We are the apple of his eye. We are the creation of his heart and hand. He took dust from the earth and shaped and fashioned us and blew his breath of life into us. And as long as it stays there, we move around the earth. And when he receives us to himself and the breath leaves, we abide in and with him to be absent from the body's present with the Lord. Let the church say amen. I love you. Peace of God rest on you. We're going to leave the worship and the sanctuary, but never ever will we leave the presence of God. Remember that. Teach your children that. I ask you to check on your seasoned people, your older people. When I say check on them, I don't just mean leave a little voicemail message or a text message, and if they don't respond in two hours, five, six hours, a day, two, three days, you don't call back because you check that off on your list. No. If they don't respond, go by the house, knock on the window where they sleep next to the bed, make sure that they're all right. And when you get old, praise God, somebody will do the same thing for you. We love you. Victory is in Jesus. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest with us and rule of all our lives. Abide with us, Lord, until we meet again. Let the church say, Amen. To the people who need to know and understand His will, God takes the yielded vessels and uses them to point us to paths of hope and change for the better. In times like these, we need to hear a voice that will speak truth to power and love to the lost. Let's be blessed together right now with Pastor Byron L. Broussard. Thank you for supporting our ministry. Giving is now easier than ever with these options. You can use e-giving by touching the link that is in the comments section of the broadcast, or you can also use e-giving on your cell phone by following the instructions for texting listed here.
If you would like to mail your donations, please send them to the Love Center at P.O. Box 310-660, Atlanta, Georgia 31131. Shake the Nations with Pastor Byron L. Broussard will be airing on 1380 AM WAOK. On Wednesday, August 19th at 11 AM, Love Center Atlanta will host a back to school backpack giveaway while supplies last. Please come and get your essentials to start your children off to a wonderful school year. Start your day with two early in the morning, Monday through Saturday at 8.15 a.m. on Facebook Live. Study God's Word with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live or watch the rebroadcast on YouTube or Instagram TV. Thank you for watching Shake the Nations. Whenever God wants to raise the church, all he does is shake the nation. You've got to understand what I'm saying. You're not playing with some man. You're playing with God.